Hello, good afternoon. Awesome, you've completed the work given to you. Nice. Good, good afternoon. So you you guys did you try the sums which were given yesterday? Hello. Good afternoon. They were easy, right? You were able to solve the sums given yesterday. Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah, they this basically covered the easy concepts of the chapter, the initial introduction concept. Nice. Okay. So it was easy then today's session you'll be able to get a hang of it. So we'll uh, move on with the chapter. I'll do remainder theorem and factor theorem today. Have you done it in school or have you heard of it? No, not yet. Okay. No worries. We'll do it. Okay, Shivesh has a doubt. He did not understand. We are going to start from remainder theorem. We'll do remainder theorem and factor theorem in this class. Then tomorrow's class, uh, we'll cover identities. Okay. Okay, Shivesh, what I'll do is I'll uh, take your doubt. I'll take up your doubt at the end. Okay. 2.1.3, right? I'll keep moving. We'll discuss it at the end. Will we do graphs? Do you have graphs in this chapter? I don't think so. No. I don't think you have graphs in this chapter, Puneet. Uh, you mainly have questions on remainder theorem and factor theorem. In third chapter, okay. So, okay, yeah, so this chapter is basically about remainder theorem, factor theorem and identities. Okay, so we'll start. I think most of you are here. So what we'll do is we'll start. I will show you the remainder theorem first. Okay. Okay, is my screen visible? First, I'll just show you how do we get the re remainder theorem or what exactly is the remainder theorem, okay? Okay, so till now, uh, in the introduction part, you would have read about and in yesterday's sums, there were long division sums, right? So you know how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial. Okay, so suppose we take a polynomial. Okay, this should be a little down. Okay, so suppose we take a polynomial 3x square 3x square plus x minus 1. So, and uh, see, I think I should still take it a bit down. Okay, so we take a polynomial P of X as 3X square plus X minus one. And we want to divide it by say polynomial G of X, which is nothing but X plus one. Okay, so now I hope you know that this is called the dividend and this is called the divisor. So dividend is the one you're going to be performing the division operation on and uh, okay hi Nikki. uh yes uh, remainder theorem is actually derived from the long division okay 
So I'm just going to show you how we get the remainder theorem and then we'll solve problems on that. Okay, so yeah. So basically this is P of X is called the dividend and G of X is called the divisor. Okay, and now we are going to do long division here. Easy peasy, right? But I just want to show you a few things we get from this long division. Which will help you understand what a remainder theorem is. Okay, so you to get 3x square here you multiply uh, first multiply with 3x right so you'll get 3x square here and the next term will be 3x into 1 which is 3x. Now sign change subtract and sign change so both are minus. So basically, this will get cancelled. And you are left with x minus 3x, which will be minus 2x minus 1. Great. And uh, then the second term you want minus 2x here. So it will be minus 2. So you get minus 2x. Minus 2 into plus 1 is minus 2. And you get the answer as this will be plus, this will also be plus, so 2 minus 1, 1. Okay, so now you know this is the dividend, this is the divisor, this is the divisor, right? This is the dividend, this is the quotient Q, and this is the remainder. R. So now we divided the dividend by this equation and we got this quotient. Now what happens if we multiply? Okay, I'll take another color. Yeah, so what happens if we multiply the quotient with the div divisor? 3x minus 2 into x plus 1 and then add the remainder plus 1. If you simplify this equation, what do you get? You open the brackets 3x x plus 1. Okay, this is x minus 2 x plus 1 plus 1. So what do you get? 3x square plus 3x minus 2x minus 2 plus 1. Get 3x square plus x minus 1. If you see, this is what our uh, dividend was. right we will get the dividend yes is it clear till here yeah what i have done i just did division and uh, if you multiply the quotient with the divisor and add the remainder you get the dividend back okay or we can write it in terms of a statement which will be we can write it in terms of a generalized statement yeah some of you are already writing it for me okay so hmm. dividend is equal to divisor into Okay, I'm just writing Q for quotient into divisor into quotient plus remainder. 
or in other terms we can also write it as p of x generally the dividend is p of x don't uh, like it's not a fixed rule the dividend can also be something like q of x or q of t s of u something like that so be careful but generally it is written as p of x and the divisor is generally written as g of x into q of x the quotient plus r of x the remainder okay so now one more rule which is which goes here is the degree so all of you understand what is the degree of a polynomial right uh, what is the degree of a polynomial you can answer in the you can type in your answer highest power right yes uh riya p of x generally dividend is generally denoted by p of x it's not an example it's a way to denote the dividend usually yes the highest power all of you are right okay so basically degree of a polynomial is the highest power so what uh, what rule comes here along with this equation is that the degree of r of x is always less than the degree of g of x okay uh why will this be because see if if in case the degree of uh, the remainder is same or equal to or greater than the uh, same or greater than the divisor that means further addition is possible right only when the degree of a remainder is less than the degree of divisor which means okay the division is completed and you get some remainder or you get zero something like that so when one more thing to note here when this is a linear polynomial okay so i think you are familiar with what is a linear polynomial what is a quadratic polynomial what is a yes okay somebody did not understand yeah you can copy this this is how you get the remainder theorem i am not sure if uh, you are asked such questions but it will be helpful for your understanding so these are like points to remember that the degree of uh, remainder is always less than the degree of the divisor so when this when the remainder is a linear uh, sorry when the divisor is a linear polynomial or a linear equation which means the highest power would be x to the power 1 something like x plus 1 or x minus 1 or x something so the highest power of x is basically 1 right degree what does that mean here vasudha uh, i think in the introduction of the chapter you would have done what is the degree of a polynomial so basically degree of a polynomial is the highest power of x of the polynomial that's how you you can uh, bifurcate equations into linear uh, quadratic biquadratic cubic right just uh, this refer to the notes of last class so that's the degree of a polynomial uh nathri which step did you not get exactly i'm not sure which is the last step here okay this is not this is not exactly notes this is just uh maybe key points or something like that as only this part this line and this this part which i'm explaining right now that the degree of the remainder should be less than the uh okay you want me to say the degree point again okay so okay 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 i got it so okay this is a key fact you know this right you got it till here that dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder okay so this this is an equation this is a standard equation standard way of representing it then the, the dividend is generally written as p of x the divisor is generally Q, g of x okay most of the cases it is p of x and g of x quotient is written as q of x and remainder is written as r of x okay so when you note this equation down a key point to remember is that the degree 
of the remainder if you look at the division we just did uh, we got the remainder as 1 right of the division of 3x square plus x plus minus 1 we just did the division at the side we got the remainder as 1 right and we got the uh, quotient as 3x minus 2 so if you see i'll just write it here so in the previous division we got the quotient as 3x minus 2 remainder as 1 and what was g of x And g of x was x plus 1, right? So if you see here, now you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So g of x is x plus 1. Here the degree of x is 1, right? This is a linear equation. The degree of x is 1. This becomes a linear equation. And degree of r is 0 because it's a constant, right? So 0 is less than 1. Basically, the degree of the remainder is less than that of g of x. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, I think you will understand now better, right? Okay, so just keep this fact in mind that the degree of the remainder is always less than that of the divi divisor. In case it is equal to or greater than, which means further division is possible. Okay, you should not stop at that step. You further division is possible. Okay. So basically we can write it as a, so you can write this equation something like this, like P of X is equal to G of X into Q of X plus R. There will be no R of X. R is a number. If G of X is a linear equation, then R will be a number. Okay, some number. That's it. So. So keeping this in mind, now what we'll do is we'll try to solve the uh, question we just did using this method. Okay. Which is basically, so P of X here is 3X square plus X minus 1. Correct? And G, G of X is, wait, I'll just check this. Minus one. This is P of X, correct? And G of X is X plus one. Right. So now what the remainder theorem states is that if you take the zero of this polynomial of the divisor of this, you know how to take a zero. How do you take a zero of a polynomial? Uh, you would have done this also, right? Yes, Puneet, that's right. That will be the zero of this polynomial. Okay, so taking, yes, Atharva. Uh, zero of this polynomial is basically this equation equated to zero. So x plus one equals to zero. Therefore, x will be minus one. So x is equal to minus one is a zero of this polynomial x plus one. So what do you do? You substitute the zero of this equation in P of x. Okay, let's see what we get. So it will be P of minus one, since we are substituting the value of minus one in place of X, will be three into minus one square plus minus one minus one. This is nothing but minus three. Okay, it will be plus three, sorry. This is nothing but three. Minus one, minus one, which is nothing but one, which happens to be a remainder. Right. So if you see, uh, yeah, you, you, if you write this part, it will be helpful. Or you can just refer to the recording later and write it again. So. Okay, so basically what it says here in the remainder theorem is that if you take the zero of the divisor 
zero of the divisor polynomial and substitute that value in the dividend you get the remainder okay i have uh, i'm saying it in simpler terms very simple terms i hope it's understandable because then i'll show you the actual theorem which which has a few complicated terms very simple the dividend which is p of x right you write p of x then you write g of x take the zero of g of x or basically find the value of x that's it find the value of x from this equation by equating it to zero and substitute that value in p of x that whatever answer you get will be your remainder okay so this will be the same if you perform long division or if you you know write it just substitute the zero and solve it so i'll just show you the statement so this is what the statement says just a second so let p of x be any polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1 and let a be any real number if p of x is divide, divided by the linear polynomial x minus a then the remainder is p of a complicated way of saying what i just explained it to you so here they just added a clause that p of x should be at least a linear equation or something having a degree of at the degree of x greater than 1 okay is it clear is it like is are you able to understand or is it getting too confusing or how is it okay abir wants me to explain again rest of you are you getting it or are you is it like too confusing okay so basically what the remainder theorem states is that you have a polynomial p of x okay or your dividend or the polynomial you are going to divide with something right okay you take that polynomial and then you take the divisor which is g of x okay neki i am explaining it again i think it will be clear now so the remainder theorem basically states that if p of x is greater has a degree of x greater than 1 so basically if it is a linear equation or a cubic or biquadratic equation basically having x power 1 2 3 or higher sorry this doesn't look like 2 3 or higher if p of x is such a polynomial then what you do is you find the zero of g of x and substitute it in p of x that will give you the remainder that's what the theorem states p of a okay i'll show it to you okay so what does it say let p of x be any polynomial of a degree greater than or equal to 1 okay i'll i'll just do it on paint and show it to you right okay so it says there is an equation p of x right in this case g of x they are saying x minus a you are going to divide it with x minus a into q of x plus r of x like i said so q of x uh, here you can see g of x is a linear polynomial right x minus a is nothing but a linear polynomial i'll write it here this is a linear equation or a linear polynomial correct right so this is what it says so now you are going to divide this p of x by x minus a where if you find the zero of this equation of this linear equation x minus a which is basically what x equal to a this is the zero of the equation so now he is saying if you substitute this value in p of x you will get the remainder let's see if we put p of a here in this equation we'll get what a minus a into q of x plus r since r will be a number right or basically this term will become zero 
So we'll be left with R. That's all the remainder theorem states that P of A is equal to R. Is it clear now? Oops. Okay. Is it somewhat clear now? Yeah, we'll solve some questions so you'll get a hang of it better. But yeah, yeah, you can copy this definitely. And this you won't be asked to prove this or something like that, but this is just for your understanding that what what exactly the remainder theorem means. Okay, anybody still having a doubt? You can raise your hand. Let me know if you did not get anything. I'll explain it again. This part which is there on the screen is just a proof of how you get the remainder theorem. Okay, so that's how a is the zero of g of x. So p p of the zero of g of x will give you the remainder. Okay, awesome. Okay, since I think you've got a hang of it, we'll what we'll do is we'll try solving few questions that that will make it even more clear. Okay, nice. Okay, so first question by remainder theorem find the remainder when P of X is divided by G of X. I'll solve this for you. I'll solve it with you. All those who are feeling that they can try it on their own go ahead. But for the others, I'll solve this question with you. Then you can try the other two sums on your own. Okay, so by remainder theorem find the remainder when P of X is divided by G of X. Nice. What is P of X? P of x is x cube minus 3x square plus 4x plus 50. And what is g of x? x minus 3. So always keep telling this to yourself that this this is the dividend. This is the dividend. There will be no confusion so that later on. And this is the divisor. Now if you see this equation. This equation is a linear equation, right? Okay, so what do we do? We find the zero of g of x first. How do we do that? We equate it to zero x minus three equals to zero. From this we get the value of x to be three. Now what do we do? We take p of the zero value. So p of three and substitute three everywhere in place of x. 3x square minus 3, 3 square plus 4 into 3. This is 3 now. Plus 50, right? 3 square 9 minus this will be 3 into 9 plus 12 plus 50. Oh, this is three cube. Sorry, three cube, right? This will be this will be twenty seven. Twenty seven. Right? Okay. This will be twenty seven minus twenty seven plus sixty two. Or oh, your answer is sixty two. Or this is the remainder this is how you solve the questions yes puneet yes mansi yes atharva abir nice good job solving anirban yes okay the rest of you did you get it did you get how to solve it's easy right so basically the remainder theorem states you find the zero of g of x which is nothing but you will get the value of x and you substitute that in p of x 
so you will get the remainder directly you don't need to perform long division you don't need to do anything this is the uh, what do you say the small shortest way of solving the question to get a remainder okay okay now let's see if you can solve on your own so okay this is the same thing what i showed it to you on the board in case you want to go through it zero of g of x is 3 then you divide it using remainder theorem you get 62 okay okay so now let's see you can solve this question p of x is x cube minus 6x square minus 2x minus 4 and g of x is 1 minus 3 by 2x so first equate g of x to 0 so you'll get the value of x and substitute it will be in terms of a fraction so substitute that fraction in p of x get some answer g of x will be in terms of a fraction so it will be 1 minus 3 by 2x equals to 0 or 1 is equal to 3 by 2x so x will be 2 by 3 right so then substitute x as 2 by 3 in the in p of x you're finding it hard okay is it because of the fraction yes atharva you're right okay we'll i'll just wait for 2 minutes for the others let me see if uh, someone else can answer otherwise i'll solve it for you uh dhruv no that's not the right answer you will get a fraction a hint you will get a fraction Okay yes yes i will solve shivesh i was just waiting for if in case i get more answers close raghav close check your numerator uh abhi yes you can solve that further right Okay, is this just because of the fractions? You all are finding it tedious. You should not get scared when you see fractions. Okay, what is the question? X cube minus. Okay, X cube minus six x square plus two x. Minus four. What is g of x? C equal to one minus p by two x. Is it my getting answers? Yes, Puni, you are right. Mansi, check your answer. Ritwik, you are missing a sign. The answer is right. It should be negative. Anirban, no. Mansi, no. Check your answers. I think you all have made calculation errors. Okay. So how do you get the zero of this? Is you equate this term to zero, so it would be nothing but one is equal to three by two x or x or x is equal to two by three. You get the reciprocal because it will go this side, right? This, this coefficient of x will go this side. It will be two by three. So now what do you do? You take p of p of two by three. Right, and b two by three cube minus six two by three square plus two into two by three minus four. Let's see. Anybody else got the answer? Abir, yes, you got it. Ah, uh, Tanisha, you're right. Rest of you, please check your answer again. Netri, Rakshita, Vasudha, Neel, 
Mansi, Abir, check your answer. Abir is right. Vasudha, check your answer. Okay, so now what do you get? 2 cube is 8. 3 cube is 27. Minus 6 into 4. Right, 2 square is 4. 3 square is 9. Plus 4 by 3. Minus 4. Now I'm just going to simplify this one here. 3 twos are. 3 threes are. Okay. So now what do you get? You get 8 by 27. Minus. Let's just add these two fractions. So it will be minus 8 plus 4 by 3 minus this you multiply 4 into 3 so it will become 12 by 3 so what will it become 8 by 27 minus 12 no sorry it won't be 12 so it's minus 4 Minus 4, or is that minus 12? Minus 4 by 12 by 3, or 8 minus 16 into 9 by 3, or it will be 8 minus 144, right? 144 by Oh, sorry, this will be 27. 27. So 27, or oh, you'll get minus 136 by 27. Okay. Now, is it okay? All of you got it now? I think you have made a mistake while simplifying the fractions. Yes? Okay. One, try this sum on your own once again. Okay. Yeah. So we'll solve. I have some simpler sum for you. Let's see. You can do this. So this is it. That's They've shown you how to solve. You can refer to this solution later. Okay. Now try this question. This is simple. This has no fraction. I want all of you to give me the answer. x cube minus 2x square minus 4x minus 1 and g of x is x plus 1. Aditya, if you've not copied the solution, it's okay. I'll be sharing the PPT. Make a note of it later. Solve this. I want answers from everybody. I want you to solve this question. Yes, Raghav. You're right. Good job. Atharva, Molly, Dhruv, yes, you're right. I'm I'm expecting answers from everyone. Puneet, are you sure? Check once again. Neil, Mustan, you're right. So what do you do? You equate g of x to 0 first. So you'll get x as minus 1, right? You put x equals to minus 1 in p of x. Aditya Verleka Rakshita, are you sure? Abir, yes. You're right. Maitri, you're right. Ranveer Singh, you're right. Abhishek Trivedi, check your answer. Tanisha Puneet, yes. Here, degree of R is equal to G of X. What did you get the remainder as? Uh, Mansi Anirban, you're right. Elena, check your calculation. Yes. So how that means it is degree zero, right? There is no x term. And this, whereas g of x is degree one. Vasudha, no. Sarah, no. Check your answer. Okay, got it. Nice. I want a correct answer from all of you. I'm going to wait till I get the answer. Yes, it is right, Elena. Arushi, yes. Shivesh, yes. Ritvik, yes. Nikki, yes. Aditya Verlekar, check your calculation. 
what if g of x is x square plus 1 okay so this remainder theorem is applicable only if g of x is a linear polynomial yes arav abhishek rakshita yes you're right linear polynomial means g of x should have the highest degree of x as 1 only then the remainder theorem is applicable for other cases you have to divide you know you use the procedure of long division and divide it to get the remainder aditya mundra yes rakshita yes vasudha no vasudha are you giving me all options where are you going wrong it's it's simple i hope you have substituted the value of x as minus 1 so it will be minus 1 cube Minus two into minus one square minus four into minus one minus one. Three I S. Okay. Uh, I think maximum of you gave me the right answer. I'll just show you the solution. I'm not solving it. This is easy. So you find the zero of g of x, which is nothing but minus one. and then you substitute the value of minus 1 in p of x you get the remainder as 0 okay one interesting question here if you get the remainder as 0 what does it mean in any general case when you get the remainder of remainder as 0 what does it mean a s a b you are right Yes, Ranveer. Yes, Mansi. Yes, Puneet. Yes, Raghav. Yeah, I'm asking if you get remainder as zero, which is basically no remainder, means Aditya, Neki, Raghav. Yes. So it's basically it means that it's a factor. We are going to be using this in the factor theorem, right? Ah, uh, Elena, I'm asking in general. In general, if you get the remainder as zero in any division, like suppose you divide six by two, you get the remainder as zero, right? Which means six is completely divisible by two, or six is a ah uh, like you can say they are factors, right? Or ah uh, six is a multiple of two, or two is a factor of six. all these statements can be said or oh, basically one line it's a factor it's completely divisible that's it in any case even if it's a polynomial it's a number division anything yeah multiples multiples factors yes but be careful so if you divide 6 by 2 so 2 will be a factor and 6 will be a multiple right and in this case like what what the example i am showing on the screen so g of x will be a factor right it is a factor of p of x and p of x is a multiple of g of x multiple will have higher power right okay so next question again i am i want all of you to answer try it come on i i most of you should be able to give me the right answer g of x equated to 0 so it will be 2x minus 1 equals 0 then you get the value of x yes arav solve this question now okay somebody is giving me answer yes atharva it's right i hope you are writing steps and i hope you are solving it properly also awesome uh molly check your answer once So g of x is 2x minus 1 equals to 0, or x is equal to 1 by 2. No, what will it be? 2x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 1 by 2, right? So substitute x equal to 1 by 2 another fraction one, but this is simpler. Yes, Raghav, you're right. So p of 1 by 2 will equal to 4 into 1 by 2 cube. Minus twelve into one by two square plus fourteen into one by two minus three. Yes, true. Uh, 
Netri, are you sure? Check your answer once. Neil, yes. Abhid, no, that's not the right answer. Check. Puneet, yes. Aditya, no. How did you get that? Aditya Verlekar. Ruthvik, Arushi, yes. Vanch, no. Uh, how did you get it in terms of decimal, Vanch? And that is not the right answer. Molly, yes, you're right. Okay, it's a simple 4 into 1 by 2 cube will be what? 4 into 1 by 8, right? Minus 12 into 1 by 2 square will be what? 12 by 4 plus 14 by 2 minus 3. Still, most of you have not given me the answer. Come on. Substitute x as 1 by 2 in the equation p of x and simplify. Yes, Serena. Awesome. Uh, Tanisha, I am not sure if that's the right answer. Rakshita, no. Okay, I'll just show you the solution. I do not know where you are getting stuck. So, 0 of g of x is 1 by 2. You substitute it, you'll get 3 by 2 as a remainder. Just go through the solution once. So all those who are stuck or got wrong answers. Anybody wants me to solve this question? Let me know. Yes, Nikki. No. 3 by 2, yes. You made some calculation errors, rest of you. It's easy. Got it? Yes. Anybody who still has a doubt or somebody who wants me to solve this question, let me know. Okay. Arav, yes. Okay, I don't see anybody asking, so we'll just move on to the next question. Oh, Abir. Yes. Okay, if you simplify your answer, it's correct. That's nice. Okay. Shiva, which part are you stuck on? 3 by 2, yes. Aditya Mundra, yes. Uh, 4, as in? So you get the 0 as 1 by 2, right? And then you substitute 1 by 2 in this equation. Then did you simplify it, Sivesh? Did you simplify the equation? Okay, try doing this after class. Let me see. If you still have doubt, I'll help you out. Okay, so next question based on what I was asking. Oh, why does it show the answer directly? Yeah. So check whether the polynomial Q of T, Q 4T cube plus 4T square minus T minus 1 is a multiple of 2T plus 1. So what is the catch here? This is what I was telling you during the previous question. For it to be a multiple, what will be the condition? Yes, the remainder is zero. Awesome. Netri, Raghav. Yes, Tanisha. Yes, Sara. So what do you do? You use the remainder theorem. So you find the... So see, now in this case, they have given you Q of T, right? As the as P of X. So that's what I was saying. It's not always that it's uh, given as P of X. So in this case, if Q of T is uh, this, you can take you know, this uh, 2, 2t plus 1 to be g of x and denote the quotient or something by some other term, capital Q, something. Yes, you can take it as g of t. Yes, Puneet, yes, g of t. So basically, you do the same thing. Find the zero of g of t, substitute it in q of t, and the remainder should be zero. If it is zero, yes, definitely q of t is a multiple of g of t. Is it a multiple? Yes, Neil. Yes, Raghav. Yes, Ritwik. Abir, why are you saying no? 
Yes, Raghav. Uh, Sara, uh, are you telling me that zero of the uh, zero of g of t? It will be minus one by two. It will be minus one by two. Atharva Nethri, yes. Abir, yes. Ryan, yes, that is the zero. So now substitute it in Q of T. I'll just show you the solution, Aditya. Since now I've been gone through two, three of these questions, I think you are pretty familiar. And it's simple. You just have to substitute the value of zero, right? So only error might be in uh, simplification. So I'll just share the solution with you. Abhishek Trivedi, check your answer once. Okay, so the zero here is 2t plus one equals to zero. So t is equal to minus half. I hope all of you are substituting t as minus half, not plus half. Yes, Rakshita. Yes, Elena. Yes, Mansi. To substitute t is equal to minus half in q of t, you should get the answer as Anirban, check your calculation once. T is minus one by two. Okay, for those of you who are stuck, yes, Tanisha. Yes, Sarah, you got it. For all those of you who are stuck, I'll just show you the answer. Okay, so like I said, it will be a multiple when the remainder is zero, right? So what you do, you just check if the remainder is zero. So by taking the zero of G of T, you get T as minus half. And when you substitute and simplify, yes, Ria. Uh, you get the remainder as zero. So we can say that 2t plus one is a factor of the given polynomial q of t or q of t is a multiple of 2t plus one. I hope you are clear on uh, the difference between factor and multiple. Right, the higher, the higher power will always be a multiple and the lower power will always be a factor. Okay, simple words and simple way of remembering it. Okay, always remember if in case you ever get confused, you know, take an take a example of a real number like uh, six by two. Okay, it's easy. So two is less than six. So it will be a factor of six. Right and six is greater than two. It will always be a multiple of two. Right two three are six a multiple of two and six. Yeah, when you divide six by two, you will get three. So two is a factor of three. Uh, six is a factor of two. What am I saying? Two is a factor of six. Okay. And everyone, yes. Okay. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll do factor theorem now since we've got a good hang of remainder theorem. So factor theorem is basically an extension of the remainder theorem where you use the remainder theorem itself to solve or to get factors for polynomials right so what do we know the remainder theorem as p of is equal to x minus a g oh sorry not g it will be q of x right plus r so there are two conditions in factor theorem what does it say first? Okay, first thing it says is x minus a is, uh, don't write all this there in the PPT, I'm just uh, explaining it to you, is a factor of p of x. If p of a is zero. Right, uh, something which I just explained it. Right, whenever the remainder is zero, p of a is nothing but the remainder theorem. Right, you substitute x of 
uh, you substitute the zero of g of x, which is a in p of x, so that will be p of a. So when p of a is zero, which means there is no remainder, which means g of x is a factor of the polynomial. That's what the first line is saying. Or what can I do? Uh, what I can do is I can show it to you. How does it? Okay. So now, if I substitute p of a in the equation, right? And uh, b. Just one second. Yeah. So if p of a is zero, which means r is equal to zero, correct? Or which means p of x is nothing but x minus a, and this is x, okay? Into q of x. This is what it will be. And the second thing which uh, the factor theorem says is vice versa. What is vice versa of the first one is if okay no need of if it's just if x minus a so it's just the opposite of the first statement which is nothing but p of a is zero if x minus a is a factor. Right? Or how do you get x minus a is a factor, which means uh, if you get the remainder as zero, like in the previous question. So it will be nothing but p of x is nothing but x minus a. X minus a into Q of X plus R, right? So what they are saying here is that if this is a factor, if this is a factor, then R will be zero. This is it. This is the factor theorem. Okay, somebody has questions. Yes, meaning of both is the same. Yeah, but you you know you can use it uh, uh, either ways. Like sometimes if they are not given you the factor, like in the previous question, they asked you what is the multiple, right? So it's basically both remainder theorem and factor theorem interchangeable. You can use it's part of the same thing, right? P of a is basically the zero. So x minus a is g of x here, Nikki. Right? Yes, this is the factor theorem. Didn't understand the factor theorem. Okay, basically it says that when the remainder is zero, x minus a is a factor. That's all is the factor theorem in simple terms. Very simple terms. When the remainder is zero, then g of x is a factor of p of x. Correct? Like we did in the previous question. We got the remainder as zero. Hence it is a factor. Uh, what is p of a y'all are asking so p of a is basically like we uh, i had shown it to you while doing the remainder theorem right so this is uh i'll just highlight it here so this is basically g of x right when you take when you find the zero when you find the zero of g of x it will be nothing but x minus a equals to zero or x equals to a so this value which you substitute in p of x to get the remainder is called p of a right so basically when you substitute the zero of g of x in p of x and you get the remainder as zero that means it's a factor g of x is a factor that's all okay Uh, it's there in the slide. If you want, you can note it down. I've just said the same thing here again. So I don't think you are asked proofs or, you know, 
uh, stuff like that is just application of the theorem but in order to, for you to know that what exactly it is <clears throat> i try to break it down <clears throat> yeah so basically this is what the factor theorem says that if p of x is a polynomial of degree n greater than 1 and a is any real number then x minus a of, is a factor of p of x if p of a is 0 and the other way around p of a is 0 if x minus a is a factor of p of x okay kind of clear like you know getting the hang of it if you see it's just it's revolving around the remainder theorem itself so it's just one equation this equation uh what equation is it what equation am i talking about this equation that p of x is equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x so both these theorems are revolving around just one equation what does it what does the factor theorem says when r of x is zero this equation automatically reduces to p of x is equal to g of x into q of x which means it's completely divisible because it only has the quotient right that's all it says that that is the factor theorem in a in a what do you say short gist okay somebody has raised their hand uh do you have a question who is it i can't make out okay anybody having a question somebody raised your hand okay i see i think nobody okay what we'll do is we'll try solving sums you'll get a hang of it mm, okay so use factor theorem to determine whether g of x is a factor of p of x in each of the following cases p of x is 2x cube plus x square minus 2x minus 1 and g of x is well, x plus one so what will you do you say the remainder is zero right for it to be a factor same procedure like remainder theorem find the zero of g of x it will be nothing but x equals to minus one and substitute it in p of x and show that the remainder is zero basically substitute it in p of x and you should uh, get the value as zero that's it yes it is a factor raghav through averius anybody confused anybody stuck yes yes netri puneet ritvik atharva abir you're right anirban yes netri yes elena yes it's simple right it's just that it's like an extension of the remainder theorem it's just it's just stating the obvious that if remainder is zero it will be a factor that's all so if they are going to ask you is this uh is this polynomial a factor you prove that the remainder is zero okay aditya are you sure check uh neki so what i'm trying to say here is that only it's the factor theorem is an extension or it is a part of the remainder theorem they are both like uh, what do you say they are not exactly separate things yes it was like the previous polynomial question that's why there we use remainder theorem here it is said to be factor theorem which means factor with theorem will state that remainder is zero and remainder theorem it's it states that when you substitute the zero of uh, g of x in p of x you get a remainder right factor theorem directly says remainder is zero that's how the two are different aditya mundra is getting one how check your calculation once man cs 
Abir, yes. Procedure is same. Yes, exactly. Procedure is same. Yeah, so you just have to show it is zero here. Right there you were finding the remainder. There the remainder was not zero. Right, that is the procedure to get the remainder. In this case, the procedure is to just show whether it's a factor or not. And uh, the remainder is zero. That's how you show the factor. So you have to justify, yeah, Nethri, you can just write a statement saying, yes, the remainder is zero, hence it is a factor. G of X is a factor. Okay, anybody stuck? Anybody question? Anybody having doubt? I'll just show you the solution, right? So this is it. If g of x is a factor, so p of uh, the value of zero of g of x must be zero, right? So you just prove it to be zero and hence it's a factor. It's easy, yes, right. Don't worry with all the proofs and everything I showed it to you. Like in the beginning of the class, I showed you how we arrived at remainder theorem. Such things will not be asked. So don't worry at all. That was just a way, like a logical way of how you, you can also think that how we got it. It's not like I just tell you a statement and then you'd be like, okay, we just have to follow this blindly, right? Okay, so try to solve this question. Same way. Same thing, prove whether prove that the remainder is zero. Right? P of x is x cube plus 3x square plus 3x plus 1 and g of x is x plus 2. Yes, Raghav. Yes, Ritvik. Yes, Dhruv. Yep, Puneet, you are right. Yes, Neil. Yes, Abir. So, Anirban, uh, that's not the right remainder. You get something, which means Atharva, check your remainder once. Mansi, yes, it is not zero. So, in this case, you get a remainder. Ryan, you got it as zero. Check your calculation. Yes, Netri, it's not a factor. Yes, Puneet. Uh, yes, Rakshita. Yes, Molly. So, since you're getting that answer, it means it is not a factor, right? It's not zero. Remainder is not zero. So, we can say it is not a factor. Yes, Muskan. Shivesh, how did you get 13? Are you sure? Check your calculation once. Elena, yes. Neki, you get the remainder as minus one. All of you, you get the remainder as minus one. I'll show it to you. Okay, yeah. So x plus 2 is a factor, which means x equals to minus 2 is what you'll substitute in p of x. So you get the remainder to be minus 1. Yes, Atharva, Ryan, Sara. Okay, understood. Yeah. So you can copy the solution later. Uh, I'll just, we'll do one more problem. Okay, P of X is X cube minus four X square plus X plus six. And G of X is X minus three. Again, same procedure. This time I want all of you to answer. Tell me the remainder and then let me know whether it's a factor or not. All answers. Yes, Raghav, Ritvik, Vanj, yes. 
Abir, yes. Puneet, Dhruv, check your answers. Yeah, it's correct. Puneet, Dhruv, Atharva, Abhishek, Rakshita, yes. Abir, check your answer once. Okay, Abir's answer got skipped. Rakshita, yes. Neil. Abir, no. Check, check. Molly, yes. Elena. Manasi, check your calculation. Netri, check your calculation. So, x equals to 3 is equal to 0. So, x is 3. So, you substitute x equals to 3 in P of x. Anirpa, no. Yes, Shivesh. Aditya Mundra, uh, Muskan, Araf, Neki, yes. You're right. Okay, anybody start? Minus 3 is a factor of the given polynomial, so you equate it to 0. It's 18. How, Netri? Anirban, yes. So, x is equal to 3. You substitute that in P of x. Yeah, on simplification, you get the remainder as 0. Therefore, g of x is a factor of P of x. Yes, Sarah. Okay, got it. Nice. Now I'm going to give you a trick question. Okay, so try doing this on your own. Find the value of k if x minus 1 is a factor of 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus k. You just have to, uh, you know, just use a fact here. I don't know how to explain it. Like, let's see. I'm not giving hints. Okay, let me know the value of k. Ritwik, awesome. Ritwik got it. Raghav, sign. Check your sign once. Yes, Ritwik, you are right. Uh, Vansh, yes, check your sign though. Aditya, check your sign. Uh, Elena, check your sign. Ryan, Abhijay, Trivedi, Afnan, you are right. Dhruv, you are right. Aditya Mundra, check your sign. Shivesh, Rakshita, you are right. Yes, Aditya, you are right now. Yes, Vansh. Molly, check the sign once. <coughs> Netri, yes. Abir, I seem to have lost your answer somewhere. Anirba, no. Okay, Ryan, your answer also, I cannot see. You can send it again. Yes, Abir, you're right. Ryan, yes. Okay, so what do you do in this case? Mansi, you're right, but check the sign once. So what do you do? It says x minus 1 is given as a factor, correct? So what do you do? You substitute x equals to 1 in this equation and equate it to 0. Right, because the, it's already given that this is a factor. And when you substitute it in this equation, you get the remainder. But the remainder is 0. That's how you equate it to 0 and you get the value of k. That's it. Here is here's the solution. Yep. So this is what you do. Molly, Mansi, yes, you're right now. Got it, right? You got the logic of how to do the question. Sara, Tanisha, Puneet, yes.
Okay, so now I'm going to, yeah, got it, nice. Nice, so, okay, now I'm going to show you something. It's uh, probably what you have doubt, somebody has a doubt. Yes, Nike, uh, what I'll do is I'll unmute you, you can ask me your doubt. Mm. Yes, Nikki. Yes, ma'am. Um, the K thing. Huh. Yeah, I uh, took the value of zero. I mean, I got till four plus three minus four plus K, but how did we? Okay, so you got till the second last step. Yeah. Okay, so what does the question say here? It says that it's a factor, right? Yes, so the remainder is zero. Yes, so the remainder is zero. So what, what do we do when we substitute the value of the zero in P of X? We use it to find the remainder, right? So we can directly say P of A is equal to zero in this case. Yes. Yes, so that's what we've done. So we substituted the value of A, which is one, right? And then we equated it to zero because the remainder is zero. If they would have given, suppose that uh, find the value of K, if this is the thing, if this is G of X and uh, this is P of X and the remainder is one. So what would we do? We would uh, substitute the value of zero and P of X and equate it to one. Because that's how you find the remainder. You got it? This is like so, a mix of the uh, remainder. We theorem. first uh, took the value of x minus, uh, sorry, x from x minus 1. And then yes. this whole thing for x cubed, um, that equation is equal to 0. Yes. Okay. Okay, I think you didn't get it. What I'll do is I'll show you quickly. Yeah. Okay, so what does the remainder theorem say? Where is the pen? Yeah. The remainder theorem, we substitute value of A here to get remainder, right? Where A is nothing but you get A from X minus A. We equate this to zero. That's how you get X equals to A, right? So you use this to get the remainder. And in this case, it is already given that P of A is zero, right? So the whole equation is substituted here with the value of A and is equated it to zero. That's all we've done. Now, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, anybody else having any question? Okay, so now you know how to factorize a polynomial. Everybody knows, I guess. I'm guessing. Right? How do you do? You split the middle term. Okay. Right? Okay, have you ever wondered how do they get the splitting the middle term? Suppose this is the equation ax squared plus bx plus c and it has these factors right suppose uh, px plus q and uh, rx plus s right so uh, the highest degree of x is two so it'll have two factors correct that's how Suppose it has these factors. Now, when I when I solve this bracket, what do I get? Px into Rx plus S. So you don't need to write this down or anything. I'm just explaining how, why do we use splitting of middle term? Like what exactly is the catch or what what is the theory behind it? Okay. So now you get nothing but P R x square plus p s plus q 
qr into x right plus qs okay now if i if i compare this equation with this equation i can say that a is pr right b is ps plus qr and c is qs correct or we can also say that b is the sum of is the sum of a and c is the sum of a and c where ac is nothing but pr into qs right so what do we do in splitting of middle term we uh, check for the product of these two terms right a and c and then write the middle term in terms of these factors the factors of this product right so this is how you get it got it am i confusing you is this going over your head some reaction so basically i have considered a quadratic equation here since the highest degree of x is 2 you will have two factors okay i have just taken randomly two factors here the x so assuming that x will have a coefficient okay in both the factors i i have taken something here and then i open the bracket i simplified it and then compared it to the standard equation of ax square plus bx plus c from there i can say that a is nothing but pr right b is nothing but what am i trying to prove how do we use the splitting the middle term so while uh, using splitting the middle term method to factorize what do we do we first check the product of a and c right you check the product of a and c and write it in terms of the factors so b is expressed as a sum or uh, some kind of a sum of a and c that's what i have shown here that b is basically a sum of a and c that's how you do that's how uh, the logic is behind using splitting the middle term to factorize okay i am uh, what do you say i don't want you to uh, memorize this or solve this on your own yeah yeah it's not uh, punit yeah it's not equal to uh, ps plus uh, pr into qs uh, what i am saying is we express uh, my last statement here is trying to say that b which is a sum of a and c is tried is written like how do you write it in terms of a and c where a and c is the product of these two right because this is the product of pr and qs you write this product in terms of the factors sum of the factors to get b okay i what i'll do is i am going to take up a uh, question and make it more clear okay for those of you you i think nobody got this it's just gone over your head isn't it okay so what i'll do is i'll just take a question let me see where is the question hmm ha huh. so we'll use this 12x okay yeah 12x square minus 7x plus 1 correct so what is splitting of middle term this is needed and somebody is asking me where is this needed okay this is a uh, a concept called splitting of middle term which is used to factorize polynomials factorize is nothing but finding the factors right so when you are given some equation like this first step step number 1 what do you do you multiply this and this right so what do you get 
12 into 1 is 12. Now, what are the factors of 12? We'll go from 1. So, 1 into 12. Oops, yeah. Then, 2 into 6. Right? And 3 into 4. Okay. We got these factors. These are the factors. Right? So, now, what do you do? Next step. Yeah, yeah, you are getting it. Yeah, quite a few of you got it, what we are trying to do here. So now, next step is step number two. Is three into four. will give you seven. Out of these factors, which combination will give you seven? Twelve and one, if you add or subtract, you don't get seven. Six and two, you add, you get eight. Subtract, you get four. Correct? 3 and 4, you add, you get 7. So, you write this equation as 12x square minus 3x minus 4x plus 1. Okay. So, basically, what the whole thing I was trying to prove to you in the previous thing was this. That how do you get the term for B? How do you split B? Is basically B is the sum sum of factors of A into C. Making more sense now, right? With the example. Now, if you see, how did I get B? Right? How did I get B? I first took the product A into C. Yeah, then I wrote down the various factors which it has. And now I got the factor which gives me B, the sum of the factors of A into C, right? Which gives me back B, correct? So yeah, so now when I solve this, this will become 3x, 4x minus 1, minus 1, 4x minus 1, correct? What do you do? You take the common bracket out. So it will be 4x minus 1 to 3x minus 1. These are the two factors. And we have successfully factorized the polynomial. Got it? Nikki has a doubt. Yes, Nikki, I'll unmute you. Yes, tell me. Ma'am, I just wanted to ask that when we get a question like uh, factorize this term, so do we have to write that B is the sum of anything like that or can we directly factorize? You can directly factorize this. If you can do it directly, that's well and good. I am. I explained it for the people who oh, are new to it. Like from the second step we have written. Yes, you can directly do it. Okay, so this procedure that I was showing you is just for the ones who are curious or ones who feel that, you know, how do we exactly do this or how do you keep in mind the pattern? I simplified it for that. So now you won't make a mistake when you are doing uh, splitting the middle term. What do you do? It's clear. You go stepwise, you will always get it. Okay, now since you all are saying you have done this, let me see. I'm going to give you questions. Let me see if you all can solve it. Then I want everybody to answer, okay? Few of you are not answering. I want your answers also. Okay. So this is what I just showed you. Now you have three questions which I want you to factorize. Here. Give me the answer for all the three questions. Same method which I use. Split the middle term and give me the answer. What will be the factors? Are 
Okay, step one, you multiply A into C. Okay, I'm getting the answer for the first one. Mm, Raghav, check your sign once. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh -huh. I, yes. You can solve the second and third one. Okay, Afnan, yes. Puneet, yes. Okay, so what do you do in this case? Ones who are stuck or ones who are still having trouble finding it out. Multiply A and C. What is A and C in this case? A is 2, C is 3. So 6, right? So right, what are the factors of 6? 1 into 6 and 2 into 3, correct? Which of those factors gives you 7? Elena, yes. Netri, yes. Punch, yes. Dhruv, yes. Anirban, yes. Okay, you guys are experts at this, I think. That's nice. Hey, Neki, what is that? Raghav, yes. Uh, one by six factors. Okay, okay. You are telling me what I was asking. Okay, fine. Yes. Then continue ahead. Yes, Shivesh. Continue. Puneet, you are giving me the answer for the third one. Yes. Uh, Ryan, I have only one more concept I'm going to take up. After that, the class will be done. So, no worries. Arav, yes. Then how uh, you write, you simplify that further, right? Yes, Afnan. Vasudha, yes. Vansh, yes. Mansi, yes. Shivesh, why do you want me to solve? Are you stuck somewhere? Where are you stuck, Shivesh? Abir, yes. Netri, yes. Where are you stuck, Shivesh? Tell me. I'll help you out. Raghav has given me the answer for the last one. Yes, Raghav, good job. In the steps, okay. So first thing, uh, yes, Afnan, uh, Riya, Shakti, yes, you're right. Vansh, you're right. So first thing, Shivesh, what do you do? You check, you multiply A into C. So A is, I'm taking the second one here and showing it to you. So A is 2, C is 3, correct? So you get 6. So now, second step is to write the factors of 6, which is what? 1 into 6 and 2 into 3, correct? Yeah. 1 into 6 and 2 into 3. So, which of these will give 7? 2 and 3 will give you 5 if you add, and if you subtract, it will give you 1, correct? So, 7 you will get with 6 and 1. So, you do plus 6 minus 1. plus six minus one, and then you uh, take take the common factor out, you will get the answer. Try it, Shivesh. Okay, somebody got stuck on, let me see what. Last sum with splitting method. Okay. Aditya Mundra, before I give you the answer, I want the answer from you. Abir, yes. Atharva, yes. Somebody is stuck with the last one. Okay, what I'll do is I'll show you the last one then. Shivesh, I'll show you the last one. Okay. So the last one is 3x square minus x minus 4. Correct? Okay. So first thing, oops, it's not erased properly. Okay. What is the first thing I do? I do Three into four, right? That's why I'm saying you follow this stepwise method. You will always remember what to do. You won't get stuck no matter what kind of questions they give you. So it's 12. What are the factors of 12? One into six, two into, oh, sorry, one into 12. I'm thinking six in my head and writing. So 1 into 12, 2 into 6, 
3 into 4. Correct. Out of this, which combination will give you 1? So there is 1 here. Correct. 1x. Out of this 12 plus or minus, if you do, you will get either 11 or you will get 13. Correct. This, if you do, you will get 8 or you will get 4. In this, if you do, you will get 7 or you will get 1. Correct. So you know you have to take this combination. So what will your next step be? 3x square. So it's minus x, which means 4x will be greater. Correct. You will uh, give the negative sign to the <coughs> greater term. So here, then you take x common. 3x minus 4 plus 1. 3x minus 4. Then you take the common bracket outside. 3x minus 4. And x plus 1. There you go. Got it now? Shivesh, can you solve? Yes, Nayatri got it. Nice. Can you solve now? Yes, Tanisha. Yes, Abir. Yes, Ria. Muskan, yes. Ritwik, I'm sorry, I've lost your answer somewhere. Can you please send it again? Sara, yes. You wrote all. Okay. Ritwik, I'll just show you the answers. Just cross check. Never mind. So, anybody still having a doubt as to how to split the term to get the factors? Here, yeah, these are the answers if you are stuck. If you follow the method I said, and that is why I showed you how do we do it, like it's in general. Any question they give you out of the blue, follow these steps. First, multiply the first and last terms, then write all the factors, then see which factor is, uh, you know, which factor the addition or subtraction gives you the middle term. Awesome, all are correct, nice. Ritwik, nice, good job. Uh, yeah, so if you follow this stepwise method, you will not get stuck. So no matter what question they give you, you will always be confident enough to solve it. Okay, so the thing is, if you go uh, without, like if you directly do without the steps, like I'm, I told you, uh, it's easy for the ones who are fluent with solving it, right? For the ones of, for those of you who are new to this concept or find it difficult, go stepwise. It's okay, it takes a minute or two more, but you are, you'll be prone to zero errors, correct? Nice, understood everything, Neki, wow, I am happy, good. Okay, so now I'm just going to cover one last concept, okay, for now, for today, and then uh, the remaining things will be taken up next class. Okay, so this concept is how to use the factor theorem to uh, factorize, yeah, we did this, we did this. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to show you how to use the factor theorem to factorize polynomials, right? So in the factor, according to the factor theorem, what do you do? You take the equation, suppose this is the equation, right? Ax squared plus bx plus c. So you say it has two, two roots which is y minus a. Oh, why am I writing y? Sorry. This is two roots. It's minus a. Okay, again, I can write it as something else. x minus, so I suppose p x minus p and okay i'm bad at this uh take some random thing like s and x minus t okay from the factor theorem this is how you do so you assume that the equation has two factors like this and this why we're taking minus is you know why because if you take the zero of these factors you will get s as x as s and x as t that's why the minus just to get <coughs> it easily right uh somebody has a questions uh 
identity is tomorrow so identities will be covered tomorrow i want to do the part where you solve by factor uh, the factor me factor method <clears throat> so yeah so you consider uh, the things to be this and then what you do you first multiply these two multiply these two in this case also ac write down all the factors okay i'm telling you the steps of how to solve it then i'll show you with one question write down all the factors and then substitute each factor in this if this is suppose this is your p of x substitute each uh, factor here as x the value of x and check if you get zero wherever you get zero it is the it is a factor correct simple anybody wants to note down these steps or i'll just directly show you with a question okay i'll just show you with a question okay so consider this question factorize y square minus 5y plus 6 using the factor theorem okay so it is uh y square why is it not working y square minus 5y plus 6 correct first step multiply ac so write it with the steps this time so that you don't make mistake so which is 6 now what are the factors factors of 6 one and six right and two and three so what you can do is you can write this uh ascending order wise so one two three six i uh, know it is not the same as middle term splitting the middle term i'll show you uh if we get a random question do we have to factorize using factor theorem or normally if you get a random question always go for splitting the middle term because that is easier that is something you are fluent in this you will get confused with this okay because this is just trial and error method so you literally have to pick out each factor do it with the do it with each factor till you get one right right like i'll show you here so i'm going to first substitute this is suppose p of y okay p of y is this so i'm going to substitute one first so and i'm going to check what do i get the value as phi i'm writing y again no phi into 1 plus 6 correct so this will give you 1 minus 5 plus 6 which is what 7 minus 5 this gives you 2 and is not a factor right you got a remainder so whenever you get it as zero only then it's a factor so basically remainder theorem is use that use the zero of g of x to get a remainder and the factor theorem is just one short statement remainder is zero that's it just keep that statement in mind whatever you do remainder is zero so now i'm going to take the next factor p of 2 so 2 square minus 5 2 plus 6 correct i'm just writing it here so it is 4 minus 10 plus 6 so if you see here the remainder is zero so now what do i say p of 2 is a factor if p of 2 is a factor which means x is x is equal to 2 correct or in this case y i'm sorry i'll just write it as y y can create confusion okay so we can say y is equal to 2 or you can write it as no. y minus 2 am i right 
right now do the same thing for pre p equals to 3 is equal to 3 square minus 5 into 3 plus 6 right this is 9 minus 15 plus 6 plus 6 so 9 and 6 is 15 15 minus 15 is 0 so you can i'm directly writing it here y minus 3 so what are the two factors for this question yes this is also 0 right yes you can stop when you get the factor but since see the degree of x is 2 here so how do you know how many factors each equation has highest degree is 2 correct so you will get two factors so once you get two factors you should stop now there is no point in me doing with six correct doubt nikki has a doubt yes nikki yes nikki tell me so we have to find yeah. two yeah if we get so we have to write y is equals two and y is equals to three yes so how can y be equal to 2 and 3? Okay, so this is a quadratic equation, right? It will have two zeros. So in the end, we have to split 5 using uh, 2 and 3? No, so what we have done is we have used another method. We have not used splitting the term method. We are using factor method to get two factors. So okay, so end, uh, this is not as a statement. Do we have to write key, uh, two and three are the factors of uh, y? No. Uh, no. In the statement, you write it as here. I'm writing it on top. Y minus two. So this is what you write. Y minus two into y minus three. Oh, this okay. equation. Just write equal to this thing. That's it. That is how you write that. These are the factors. Yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. Yes, uh, Atharva, you can solve it by splitting midterm method, but there are questions which come in the exam which say find using factor method. So if they say factor method, what do you do? First, multiply the first and last term, whatever you get, find the factors of that multiple. Okay, and then take one by one each factor. This is trial and error method. Yes, y minus 6 is not a factor. Yes, Ritri. So by trial and error method, you get. So see here, there is a catch. If you see actually, if you take splitting the middle term, here 6 and 1 will give you 5, 2 and 3 will also give you 5. Correct? 6 minus 1. But yeah, since it is minus 5 here, you can't use 6 minus 1. But there will be cases like this. So you should not get are confused right suppose you are doing this sum by splitting the middle term correct you got the factor still here both the steps are the same now you are stuck as to which to use because six minus one will give you five and two plus three will also give you five correct but here check the sign then there will be some catch because only one can be used like here it is minus five you use six and one you won't get minus five here you will only get plus five right or it becomes minus 7 if you use 6 and 1 or minus 6 plus 1 you can use yeah you can use minus 6 plus 1 right but that is not correct that is not a factor in this case okay so whenever like if it is not specified we will get how yeah, you will get minus 6 plus 1. Yep. Yes, but uh, using this method, uh, it says, what do you say? So, using different methods, you're getting different answers for this question. Yes, this is a little bit... Uh,
yeah so that's what if you use splitting the middle term method i think you can use both the factors then 2 and 3 and 6 and 1 if you use uh, minus 6 plus 1 if you use minus 6 plus 1 you will get minus 5 and then plus 6 hmm i don't know what i'll do is i'll solve this question uh using splitting the factor method and uh, i'll see how do you do okay yeah but uh just keep this thing in mind if you are using factor method you write all the factors down okay and uh, what do you do you use trial and error method and substitute the value of each factor in p of x or y whatever it is yep i think that's it for today let me see we covered all questions yeah so here this is this is another way of solving it here is the solution in case you know yeah so let p of y be that so they have written it as two factors so you can write it like this y minus a into y minus b so you know that the constant term will be ab correct the constant term will be ab if you if you open this bracket you will get ab right y square minus ab by Right, y square minus a by minus b by plus a b. This is basically yeah. So you look for the factors of six, and then you the year they did not uh, do using one. They directly did. Uh, they took two. as a factor and uh, three as a factor and directly said these are the factors but actually you won't know it won't be this simple you should consider all the factors you get till you get two at least as right right wow abhir is saying he did all the questions correct today nice okay yeah you can leave so we'll cover identities tomorrow these questions are done awesome anybody having any doubt can stay back ask me i'll help you out other than that you can leave okay bye bye it was a bit complicated but understood everything i'm glad neki good bye Okay bye guys I'm glad you understood